a video titled, What's Wrong with Electric Vehicles? 12 Myths and Two Truths, and I'll put a link to that in the top right hand corner. But one of the discussions that keeps coming up is how, especially with all of the power problems that various places have been facing with brownouts and other things, how possibly can the grid handle all of that power? Demand from new electric and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. So what we have here are a number of clips from people at work on the grid that understand the grid and are not just guessing at how things operate today and how they will operate in the future, as well as a few graphs that you will probably find quite interesting. So let's get to it. And the simple answer is yes. Uh, John, as you think about really the core business that a utility, and this certainly is true of DT Energy, exists to do, it's, it's to provide safe and reliable power. And so one of the things that we do uh, day in, day out, month in, month out, year in, year out, is we, we have a pulse on the overall economy, the needs of our customers, be it industry, uh, commercial, or, or those residential customers. And so what we would say is this is core to exactly what we do. Focus on planning for EVs has really been ongoing over the past five years. On an annual basis, uh, DTE, just as an example, we invest about a billion dollars per year to make upgrades to the grid to ensure that our customers have that safe and reliable power. Um, these investments are in places such as substations, uh, transformers in the local neighborhood to ensure that when customers plug in, they're gonna have that power that they need out there. So grid companies aren't just aware that EVs are being added to the network. They're looking forward to it and they're expanding to meet the need. You might have guessed that if you think about it a bit. But what you probably didn't know was that in 2017, about a third of all EV drivers also have solar panels, meaning that they don't get their power just from the grid. By 2019, that number had jumped up to closer to 40%. Now remember, unlike a gas vehicle, you can charge whenever you want to. So EVs can just charge during the day, just use solar, if that's what the EV owners decide to do. Did you know that companies that produce electricity regularly blow it off and waste it because they have no place to put it? That's uh, expensive and difficult to do for coal. It costs, it's inefficient to scale it up and scale it down. And for wind and solar that only occur during the day, it's just a waste. Are EVs going to impact the grid? And I think one element that, that sometimes get not highlighted enough is that EVs offers a tremendous opportunity for growing the load, but this load is gonna also be really flexible. Uh, flexibility in the future of power, power system would be, be key. You know, as we adopt more and more renewables, which are not dispatchable, so we cannot decide when the sun is shining or when the wind is blowing, having a flexible load that complements those uh, those uh, sources of power is gonna be a extremely valuable for the, for the overall system at all levels. We'd like to interject for just a few seconds and ask you to click like, and if you like this type of thing, please click subscribe. Both of those things make a huge difference in the Google algorithm. We mostly talk about electric vehicles, the energy industry, and high technology. And we take on both sides of issues. We try to stick with facts. Thanks, back to the show. Ultimately, uh Part of the benefit to the customers is that uh, this allows DTE to provide even more affordable energy to customers out there. What we see today, uh, based on the investments we've made, is that 80% of residential customers in those light duty vehicles are going to be charging at home, right? So they're gonna be charging um, in, in a charger that they put in their home. And what they're able to do is use a time of use rate, which basically says you have an incentive for, as Mateo was saying, charging off peak hours. And so what that allows DTE to do is ensure that we are most effectively uh, utilizing the energy that we are pushing through the grid. And then the customer is, is charging at a time when there is lower overall demand, which I think, John, gets back to your second question. What happens on those days during the summer? Well, the time of use rates are able are, are what help us to ensure that uh, we're meeting the air conditioning needs during the daytime. And then we're charging those automobiles uh, overnight when, when, when there's not quite the same demand. Another point that's often talked about is a vehicle to grid. Getting your power from your car into the central grid, look, just isn't gonna happen in the next five or 10 years. There's a lot of work that needs to get done. But what is going to happen is the ability for you to take the power from your car and plug it directly into your house. Look no further than the new Ford pickups and any other new EV or PHEV for that matter, and you'll find that they have outlets in them. And that's really gonna help the grid when it is struggling. So let's see a heat wave hits California and there is a shortage of power or, 
or any other sort of extreme situation. Well, if you can have this additional source of power that can be injected into the grid, that's going to help the entire system. And so, so that, that can be very attractive and very beneficial. So, so, so that's, that's a significant value. The other layer is at the customer level, you know, something happens to your distribution transformer and you disconnect from the grid for whatever reason, maybe, maybe simply a tree fell on, fell on the transmission line or a, on the distribution line and, and your refrigerator goes off, your Wi-Fi goes off, you can't work from home like we do uh, nowadays. If you have a vehicle available in your garage that can ju just power your house for a, for a day, that would be a major service, a major benefit for a consumer. What if we have five people on my, you know, five homes on my transformer who all adopt an electric vehicle? And DTE says that is great, right? Because the EVs are the proverbial win, 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 right? It's a win for the environment. It's a win for our customers, right? EV adoption helps rate affordability. It helps us to keep those bills low for our customers. It helps as more renewables come online, you're able to see that what we call that levelized cost of energy continue to come down, which has the benefit to all of our customers out there. Um, and so, I mean, as we said, we see EVs as really just a nearly universally positive, like I said, that proverbial win-win-win um, for, for the various stakeholders who are out there. Who are not familiar with us, the, the National Renewable Energy Lab is part of the Department of Energy Complex of National Labs. And we do research on a number of topics, including vehicle grid integration, which is something that I focus uh, a lot on. And we, we really see no major threat uh, from EVs. EVs uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the grid being able uh, to support vehicle electrification. Uh, you know the experience that DT is is uh, putting forward is exactly what we're seeing nationally. You know the key word we think is planning and make sure that we know what to expect and when to expect it.